Alrighty, so we're going to finish up in a few minutes, but I, as I said, I'm going to answer three questions that I always get, and I also want to talk about what's on the screen really briefly. So approaching year 12, my biggest step to you in the next couple of months is accepting that it will be stressful and it is hard and it's going to suck at some points, but it does not have to dominate your life. And if you're lucky like me, it might be one of the best years of your life, despite it simultaneously being the worst. It's a paradox like that. Um, one of the most important things is trying your very best to stay up to date in your maths class. And if you don't learn to prioritize. So what I would do is if I was falling behind because I was doing something else or I was out of school that day, I would try and cut my homework in half or I would ha try and skip the first third by only attempting the harder questions that are usually at the back of the exercise. So you can usually tell the first ones are more like practicing conversions or doing easy tax questions, but the back ones are going to be way harder. Try and prioritize by cutting out those first few questions. The other thing that I have on here is about planning your revision weeks out from the exam. So let's say that this is like your trial exam here. Hopefully it would be more, but let's say like borderline one week out, you're able to do just full exam conditions. Two weeks out, you're doing it like timed with a few notes. Three weeks out, you can do it untimed with your notes out. And four weeks out, you can work on finalizing those notes. The most important thing you can do is the green section. People who do this section and people who never do it are the difference between like an 80 and a 98 ATAR. Like that is actually the difference is, are you practicing in full exam conditions? Because full exam conditions is what matters, right? If you can write an essay in three hours, that's great, but you need to be able to do it in 40 minutes in modern history. So it's about, can I do what I'm able to provide outside of the exam in the exam? That is what will determine where you fall on ATAR release day. The three questions that I get at the end of every lecture are, where do I find practice papers? What do I do if I still don't understand something? And what do I do if I procrastinate? I'm gonna walk through each of those three questions now. Firstly, where do I find practice papers? Okay, on the internet, you can go to Nessa and do all of their practice papers. You can use ATAR Notes Plus and ATAR Notes Shoot Smart in general, all of our resources. We have paid and unpaid. Uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Ace HSC has um, a bunch of past papers and then the internet in general. Try Googling around. Also ask your school and your teachers if they have past papers. They might store them in the library. Your teacher might have copies because a lot of them you have to pay for. That is my best tip with that. But again, we have a bunch on ATAR Notes Plus and in our database as well if you want to check them out. And as tutors, I'm always providing like millions of past papers. Second question, what do I do if I still don't understand something and I'm struggling to learn it and I just feel like it's never going to click? The first question I would have is like, are you trying to learn the same thing the same way? Sometimes you're trying to learn something via like letters and words, but maybe it needs to be learned visually. Maybe with working with time questions, you need to try and do them visually instead of word based. Or maybe with um, networks questions, it's too visual and you need to kind of cut back and just focus on the words and the letters. So are you learning it one way and should you try and change the way you're learning it? And have you exhausted every resource that you have? Your teacher, your peers, other teachers at the school, an older sibling, a tutor, YouTube videos, ATAR notes, books, whatever it is, have you gone to every single resource? Because I guarantee there is a resource that can help you learn it better than you've already tried. The last question I always get is what do I do about procrastination? And I am the biggest procrastinator. I procrastinate everything in life, but I've never missed an exam. I've never missed a due date. I've never missed an assignment. I've never missed anything, right? I am procrastinate, but I'm very organized. And so I never miss anything. And I do do quite well on most things that I hand in. I've still got a distinction average at uni. I managed to get a 95.6. I'm not failing, right? My biggest tip is A, some people are actually just being a little bit lazy sometimes and you aren't procrastinating. You're just kind of like, you know, maybe you could work a bit better. Most people, you are a procrastinator. And for me, the best thing I did was accept that that was how I worked and use it to my advantage. So now I understand that I'm a procrastinator, but I use it as my way to learn, if that makes sense. So the first thing I do is I don't like lie to myself anymore. I don't pretend that I'm going to wake up and start work at 10 a.m. in the morning. I won't. I usually start on a weekend at maybe like two or three in the afternoon at my very best. Usually I start at like six o'clock at night. So I stopped lying to myself and wasting the day and I started making plans for things, right? I'll go to breakfast. I'll hang out with my friends during the day. I'll go to the beach and I'll do my work afterwards. 
or I make plans in the evening so that I have to do the work during the day. That's been a real game changer for me. Um, the next thing is that it doesn't mean that you're a bad worker or it doesn't mean that you're a bad at studying, right? Like I was able to get high marks and a lot of people who had way more structure in their study and would start at 8am on a Saturday, right? It doesn't mean that your work is worthless because you're doing it at a different time or you're doing it later or you're doing it closer to a due date. I work well under pressure. I like having pressure and I like having deadlines. That's how I work best. It's not the way everyone works best. But if you're like me, accept that that's the way you work best and use it to your advantage. Another big game changer for me is writing things out in really, really small chunks. So when I have an assignment or an exam, my to-do list will be like create exam document, print notification, print, you know, like I said earlier, and I make it so minute that I know I'm succeeding when I am ticking off like 10, 15 things on my to-do list. Now it's not like type 10 words, but it will be like write intro, research um, that one idea or read cases or whatever it is. And it helps me actually achieve things on a to-do list rather than just writing down do assignment because that's so daunting like you sit down you're like oh my god I have to do my assignment no break it down and schedule it out the best you can I actually do schedule work for myself I find that I like stick to it fairly well Um, but making plans that are in the way of your studying that you have to study beforehand and breaking the work down into chunks are two big game changers. Another thing is this app Forest. Um, I'm a big distraction person. So my phone, I find it super distracting, my laptop. What I do is actually keep a list next to me. And I th- and whenever I think of something I wanna like Google or do, I'm like, okay, so I really need to like do my washing. I write down like do washing. Or if I'm like, I really wanna Google that like one thing I saw on TV, I write it down and then I can go through that list later, but I don't have to like keep Googling that like, you know, actor that I thought about from like 2011 that I want to Google like in the middle of my study. No, I write it down, come back to it. Forest is amazing. Basically you like plant a little like fake tree and it starts growing. We'll cancel that. Um, And what happens is, is if you go on your phone or you do anything else, it dies. And so I've unlocked all these beautiful little trees in here. Um, And I'll show you, I guess I can show you my forest from high school. Um... Yeah, that was my little forest I grew in year 12 and I've used it every year of uni since. Um, So for example, last year I planted 80 trees and I focused for 41 hours. Um, My HSC year, I got 50 hours and I planted 99 trees. So I find that super useful so that I can't get on my phone because I like can't kill the tree guys. Like I, if you kill it, it's just like dead in your forest and it's like, I don't want dead trees. So it works on me, but there's so many ways you can like lock down your browser, lock down your phone, but that one works for me. I hope that I've answered most of the questions that students usually have. If I haven't, I'm also in the chat right now answering your questions. So continue to ask away, but I am going to wrap up here with you guys. It won't close. Like you can keep talking in the chat. It's all good, but thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this helpful or beneficial or, um, supportive in some way or another I do my best to kind of give you different parts of the content and make sure I'm giving you tips that I think are helpful but every student's different and I just hope it was helpful to you in some regard you are going to smash it remember our lectures are quarterly so we're back here in April with our next round of lectures and then again in July and September so I hope to see you guys then all the very best with your first term back um, for the year and your second term of year 12 you're so close to finishing it will literally go like that so have fun Enjoy the time with your friends and hopefully I'll see you back in April. Bye guys. You're going to smash it.